Yeah, it's a commuter scooter with 500 watt motors, speeds of up to 19 miles per hour, and some really cool features that we haven't seen on a lot of electric scooters. What's up guys, Jimmy Chang with Andrew. Welcome back to Freshly Charged, where we review personal electric vehicles like this commuter scooter by VMAX. This is a company from Switzerland. It's very popular in Europe and it's just making its way to America. Yeah, so it looks like they have quite a few of the specs on here. The max range is about 60 kilometers, which is about 40 miles. The max load is 130 kilograms. Battery is a 48 volt, 16 amp hour battery. And this is a VX2 Pro, and it comes in three different versions. We've got the GT version, which is the biggest battery version. All right, let's get this box open. So mostly cardboard, 54.6 volt two amp output. This is a 16 amp hour battery, so this should take eight hours to charge from empty to full. And this is interesting, there's a lot of extra slack in this cable. This is a lot of cabling. I've gotta push this all the way down into here, so this is kinda of interesting. I don't a think- A lot of slack. I think they could've saved some money on the copper cabling, because copper is expensive right now. This is an MKBHD scooter. <laughs> Matte black everything. We have a tool and some instructions. The instructions are very clear and crisp. Some nice pictures inside. Easy peasy, just four screws and you're good to go. So let's do a quick walkthrough. So starting out with the cockpit, I've got kickstart off, but you can change that on the app. You actually have some turn signal lights on the ends of the handlebars, two brake levers, center display. This is the first time we've ever seen this type of grip on an electric scooter or e-bike. Moving down the center, you have this folding mechanism, which you lift up to unlatch it. It's got a safety mechanism as well where you have to push down for it to unlatch. Locks into itself when folded for easy lifting. This is the heaviest battery version. I believe weighs about 43 to 45 pounds. 10 by 2.7 inch tire, which is a tubeless pneumatic tire and a drum brake inside there. I do prefer disc brakes, but drum brakes take less maintenance. And it's really easy to adjust them. You just adjust this bolt and it will tighten down on that compression in the drums. Moving down, you have this silicone deck, which is nice because it makes it for easy cleaning. It does show dirt a little bit easier than grip tape. The charge port is on the left side, right next to the kickstand. And one thing I like is that all the bolts have these little covers on them. So it looks really sleek. Turn signals in the rear, rear fender, which looks like it offers great coverage. A little license plate holder, another 10 inch by 2.7 inch tire with a 500 watt motor. And then from the app, I can actually adjust the braking and the acceleration curve. So that is pretty sweet. So I do like that, that I can lock the scooter for extra security. Is there an alarm? I don't know if there's an alarm, let's see. Oh, it won't let me move it either. So there's a lot of resistance as I try to push it, it's resisting me, it will not move. It's not super loud, but there's enough resistance there that, uh, and between the resistance and the beeping, it's letting you know, don't steal me. So that's pretty much it. Very simplistic, really sweet Swiss design. We'll get this thing freshly charged, Take it out for a ride, let you know what we love about it, what we hate about it, and who we think this is for. All right, we are out on the VX2 Pro GT, and we're gonna, right off the bat, take it up a hill, see how it handles. So this is the steep part of the hill. This is cruising up this hill. That's crazy. Man, they don't call them hills in Switzerland, they call them Alps. Crazy, because I didn't have any inertia going into this hill, and I'm going 15, 14 miles per hour, and it's going between 14 and 15, but... It's also really solid too. And I take that back. In Switzerland, I think they do have hills and they're actually alive. You know what that's from? No. <laughs> the hills are alive oh, yeah, there you go. with the sound <laughs> of music. <laughs> ah. If you can actually put a clip of like the real thing singing so you don't have to hear me, that would be awesome. We've talked about the hill climbing abilities, which is actually pretty impressive. Let's see the stopping power. So there comes Andrew, and he's gonna stop at this line. The front brake is a drum brake. The rear brake is an electric brake. All right, that's pretty good. Two parking spots. Okay, so let me just see if I can adjust them to be a little bit stronger. So last time Andrew stopped, he went two parking lines. Let's see how far this one takes him. Brakes? Yeah, so oh, it was yeah. definitely adjusting the brakes on there. They're easy to adjust, and I was able to stop better. For those that don't like to do maintenance on their scooters, drum brakes require very little maintenance. So impressive hill climbing, impressive brakes. The acceleration is surprisingly good for such a small motor. And also the handlebars are wider than what you see on a traditional commuter scooter. Let's ride and find a place where we can talk about the things that we love about this scooter. 
So I was predicting that the fenders would rattle because that's usually what happens, but there was zero rattle on that. No suspension and uh, it sounded pretty darn solid. Yeah, rear fender is pretty rigid. A lot of these commuter scooters have these rear fenders that are very thin and they do slap on that rear tire. And I think what else adds to the solid sound and feel when it landed is the fact that there are so few cables. In the entire scooter, we only see two cables and they're pretty, they're managed pretty well. I love how it's positioned, very symmetric. Leave it up to the Swiss engineers to design something this clean. All right, we're having a good time on the V-Max. Let's talk about the things that we love about this scooter. First off, I love the matte black. I like the all black look. It's a great look for a scooter. It's my preference. One of my favorite things is the handlebar grips, and I just don't know why other scooters haven't done this in the past. It reminds me of my DMR death grips that I have on my mountain bikes, where they have these finger holes. So these finger holes on there are great for gripping and then they've got these knobbies at the top. So nice and plush and easy to grip. I love how crisp the display is in direct sunlight. A lot of other scooters get washed out. I love the turn signals. They're bright. I like that they're high up. Definitely pops and definitely catches your attention. And then on top of that, the cable management is excellent. And adding on to the turn signals, I like that they have rear turn signals. We've never seen them kind of pop up in the rear where they're a little bit higher mounted. A lot of them are low mounted and they're hard to see in direct sunlight. The 500 watt motor with a peak output of 1300 watts is excellent at climbing hills. The folding mechanism is very sturdy. It locks into place, which is what you need because you're going to be folding this often when you're on your commutes, taking it onto the bus, onto the train, up and down stairs. So when you go to open it up, the scooter still stays secure until you push down on it. And then it just pops right into place. So easy lifting, not too bad at all. On top of the nice secure folding, there's zero movement in the step. Everyone has different needs for their scooters in terms of power and range. And so this does come in different variation. Yeah, because a lot of people love the simplicity of a basic scooter that doesn't have suspension, but a lot of them have such small batteries. So I like that you can get one with a smaller battery if you don't need that much range, or you can get a large battery if you're looking to go longer distances. Even without suspension, as long as you have pneumatic tires, that still helps to take out some of the chatter on the road, makes it more comfortable for long distances. And here we have pneumatic tires. And they're also tubeless pneumatic tires, which is a huge plus. They just don't get as many flats. Drum brakes require a lot less maintenance and can last up to thousands of miles. So it's nice to have a drum brake in the front. And the rear has regen braking, where you can recapture some of that energy and put it into the battery. The buns on here are very nice and creates a really clean look in the cockpit. So Swiss engineering, kind of like their watches, their knives, their cuckoo clocks, this thing is solid. We're gonna keep riding and on our next stop, we're gonna talk about the things that we don't like about this scooter. We're taking a little pit stop because the handlebars got a little loose. Andrew, what are you doing right here? Yeah, just tightening these bolts down and it was just right here. There was a little bit of movement up there that I noticed, but nothing too crazy. The bolts come with Loctite already on them, but I find that liquid Loctite works better. And we'll have a link in the description down below. We Loctite any bolt that comes a little loose, it needs a little Loctite. I have been jumping the crap out of the scooter though. It's been pretty fun to bunny hop. And just a reminder, when you're going riding on these things, make sure to keep a spare set of tools because you never know when you're going to need them to tighten something or to fix something on the go. All right, let's talk about the things that we don't like about this scooter. Biggest thing for me is I love that it has regen braking, but I don't love that it's connected to a traditional brake lever. There's just a lot of resistance to have to get the electric braking to engage. Electrical braking feels very different from your traditional uh, physical brakes, you grab onto this handle thinking that it's going to be a mechanical type brake, but it's an electrical brake. At first, it may feel a little different to you, but just realize it's electrical braking and it's actually recharging the battery as you're using that brake lever. Electrical braking can be adjusted through the app. I would like for it to just engage as soon as I let go of the throttle. The other thing that I have an issue with is the front light. It's not very bright, but I've yet to find a light that I like on a commuter scooter. I'd feel like these chunky welds don't quite fit with the overall look. I'd like for a more smooth weld 
as you see with some of the higher class premium type scooters. I agree with that, but I also don't mind the chunky welts because I've been bunny hopping this scooter with confidence that it's not gonna break on me. I love the matte black finish that they've gone with the scooter. However, with the black silicone deck, it shows dirt real easily. A lot of other electric scooters have gone with more of a tan or a gray color to hide dirt, where you can instantly see as soon as I stepped on the scooter, I started putting dirt all over the silicone deck. But the silicone deck does make it easy to clean. The last thing is the price point on the scooter is a little bit higher than other scooters in this class. However, it is a finely crafted machine and the first ever Switzerland engineered scooter we've ever reviewed on the channel. Let's keep riding and we're gonna talk about who we think should get this scooter. The Swiss, they've decided to enter a crowded market of commuter style scooters, but I think they've set themselves apart with a fine piece of machinery. Andrew, who do you think should get this scooter? This is a great commuter scooter for people who are willing to spend a little bit extra money for craftsmanship and get a ton of range. Thanks for watching. Check out our full written review at freshlycharged.com. And remember, when you guys ride, wear your safety gear.